Mr. Manconi and his team have been burning the midnight oil, uh, making sure everything is ready for Saturday, and we thank you for all of your years of hard work on this, John. This has been uh, uh, probably uh, the most challenging file you've ever had as a public servant, and uh, we appreciate uh, your, both your competency as well as your patience in dealing uh, with this complex uh, project uh, that is a true city building project. So uh, the floor is yours, and I believe we have a presentation. So, Mr. Mayor, members of committee, uh, members of council, uh, four days until the biggest uh, milestone in Ottawa's transit history, uh, the first bus rapid transit to light rail transit system conversion in the world, the busiest LRT line uh, on opening day in North America, uh, so many firsts, and uh, locally everyone is watching, the transit and the transportation world is watching us also uh, from uh, across North America and worldwide. So nearly a decade of hard work, planning, consulting, designing, constructing, and testing will become a reality this Saturday. And staff uh, from our team uh, across the city, all the departments, Rideau Transit Group and Rideau Transit Maintenance are working uh, literally 24-7, uh, ensuring that the Confederation line is ready for our customers and our great city. Um, we've been running many, many drills uh, over the last number of days and weeks uh, leading up to launch. Uh, that's just a small taste of some of the uh, drills that we've been doing, and that's to ensure that we're ready for anything that uh, comes our way, and uh, this is what uh, the best practices uh, do, uh, everything from biohazards to evacuations, smoke on the train, and so forth. Uh, so a long list of uh, rehearsals and drills and lessons learned and documentation and involvement from, uh, from many people. The drills. Uh, include uh, all our staff, our operators, our controllers, our supervisors, special constables, customer service, and uh, emergency protective services, uh, fire, police, uh, paramedics, and I want to thank them. Uh, they've been uh, together with us on this journey. And uh, that's, again, ensuring that we're ready for uh, any event. We, uh, we had uh, a dress rehearsal on Saturday. I want to thank all of the uh, city partners, uh, city departments, the GMs, volunteered staff, from their organizations, um, and uh, the rehearsal went really well. It did a couple of things. Uh, people were given specific assignments so we could test not just the systems, but also the staff. So, uh, you know, we even had a lost child scenario. We, uh, we had people trying to ensure that uh, all the systems work. And uh, equally important is a fresh set of eyes that come back and give us uh, observations and logs and so forth. So it was a very good, uh, um, uh, process for us. We also uh, held a lot of tours for many stakeholders. That's a small sampling of the list. These folks were very appreciative and again a fresh set of eyes through their lenses and through an integrated community, holistic, bringing everybody from the city in because that system is for everyone, built with the latest and the greatest features, the most one of the most accessible systems in North America uh, that, that you've invested in and uh, we've, uh, we've spared no expense to ensure that it's all inclusive, safe, and accessible for everyone. Customer outreach, uh, we're doing a lot of things to ensure that our number one uh, priority is uh, clearly focused and uh, uh, attended to, and that's our customers. There's a lot of change coming for everyone. Um, so signs at bus stops and stations, I'm sure you've seen those. Messaging through all our various channels. Uh, the uh, the mail-outs, uh, uh, very, very important. We started those last Friday. Every single household in the city will receive one. And then a second mail-out uh, uh, occurs the week of September 23rd. That's to um, take them through the journey of the changes. Uh, the red vests, many of you have commented about the visibility of the red vests, both at your councillor meetings, but also out on the system. And uh, uh, not just the train stations, they're at key transfer points and so forth. We're working on a very uh, um, uh, concert, uh, concerted effort to ensure that all the stations and the amenities are, have a deep clean uh, so that they're ready for our customers. That's occurring all this week, and that's ensuring that everything is uh, up to standard. Uh, on Saturday, there is a media event and the cer ceremonial ride. Uh, it's going to mark the opening of the line, um, and it starts at Tunney's Pasture. There will be formal remarks by all three levels of our uh, funding partners and representations from the Indigenous leaders, who of course uh, play a critical part in this project. 
and then guests will be invited to uh, board the train for the inaugural ride. Public opening is at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, lots of questions on that. There's a lot of thought that's been given to that. There is staging that needs to occur and so forth in terms of opening up sequentially and, and, and everything else. We'll have red vest staff uh, all over the place uh, flooding the system to ensure that we're there to assist anyone. And then from 2.30 to 4.30 at uh, all the stations along the line, councillors are doing uh, special events with local musicians, art representatives to discuss the fantastic uh, works of arts that are in the station. So that's uh, something that we're very proud of and thank you to all the councillors that uh, have participated in that. So key dates for customers, uh, all of this is out there. You've heard it many times. It's this, this becomes a question of repeating it, repeating it, and making sure that we can support everyone. Uh, we have the three weeks of parallel bus service. Uh, that will remain in place on Sunday, October the 6th. Uh, your bus network undergoes major changes to align with the Confederation line, and the bus service gets peeled off. It's removed. Uh, customers, uh, you know, if they're asking you where do I go for information, octransport.com is your first uh, best bet uh, on uh, planning out your route. Remembering that uh, while some people may want to try to take in all of the changes, what is important for the commuter is their commute. And uh, we, uh, in, the, in the many sessions we've had and the feedback, when you see the people, the red vests at the stations, it's all about that. Every one of those uh, members have been trained. They have uh, pocketbooks with every single route so they can not only just talk to the customers but also show them their route changes and so forth. Um, check mailboxes is another reminder uh, to, uh, to our residents and if you can do that through your channels that's also helpful. And then the second notice is, uh, is coming through also on the 23rd. On the 14th uh, there will be uh, some changes so the bus service at Blair will be adjusted to serve the new bus platforms and yes it has been stress tested as you know if you recollect we did that a few months ago. Uh, westbound uh, the bus stops at Albert and Bayview are going to be moved to adjacent to the station plaza. Again this is a lot of information it's relevant to those people that use it and uh, they've been uh, adjusting their, uh, their, their plans accordingly. The entrance to Saint Laurent station from Tremblay will reopen, that's important, and the fare paid zones at Tunney's, Herdman, Blair and Bayview come into effect. Um, and then service adjustments for the routes that are listed at the bottom of the slide. Then we move into uh, service integration and the expansion, so everything's mapped out in terms of what we have to do. We have to remove the detours for the East End councillors, you'll be happy to know. We are pushing MTO very hard that the first one that needs to come off is the 417 uh, connection. Uh, I know you've waited long and hard for that one there. Uh, we, uh, we've prioritized it accordingly. Uh, then the Lees Avenue one. And then there is work that RTG has to do. Uh, the Nicholas uh, Street area, the realignment of the bus lanes on Laurier. Uh, I know uh, Councillor Flody has been asking about that one. Um, the removal of the eastbound and overhead bus lanes on Scott Street. Um, I know uh, Councillor Leeper has been asking about that, so we briefed him on that. And then the Albert Street and Booth Street uh, adjustments accordingly. Also, we have to do some uh, signage changes on 174. I can assure uh, members of the committee and councillors that uh, Mr. Landry and his team are uh, the quarterbacks on all the traffic logistics. We are not doing anything in isolated. It's all an integrated system, all integrated mobilities, and it's all users. It's cars, automobiles. Uh, uh, trucks, uh, cyclists, pedestrians and so forth and yes we've had a few glitches. I know we, we did something that, uh, that uh, buggered up Councillor Harder and, uh, and, and, and Councillor Brockington's area but we moved quickly to adjust that with their support. So uh, it's an integrated transportation system and we're, we're doing that accordingly. Um, then on October 6th uh, this is when your investment kicks in of the five million dollars. Uh, I know many councillors have been asking about that so it's literally around the corner. Over 100 routes will, make, uh, will be adjusted. The bus volume on Albert and Slater, one of the dividends of your, of your investment will reduce significantly. And then you'll have uh, better, faster connections with your, the investments that you've also made. And there's some renumbering of routes. And again, we're providing uh, information through various channels. We will remain in place until late October. And we've uh, uh, built the plan so that our, our support staff can stay longer if they need to. So we'll, we're literally monitoring it day by day. 
So lastly, um, look for the red vests out there. They're, uh, they're your best friend. They can help you out if you have any question on any matter, not just the service.